All right, it's time to get to NBA, and your next guest is having a good season with us. He's having a good season, 18 and 14, hitting at 56.3%, plus 2.39 units ROI, plus 7.47%, average line plus 111. He has swept the board in two of his last five shows with us. He swept the board Thursday, did not do that Friday, but, but man. Uh, he's a, a hell of a capper, and I can't wait to break down this game with him. Please welcome South Jersey in the house, getting bills with Billy Brisbane. Brizzy, how are you, my man? What up, Jim? How you doing? Good, good. Uh, very excited about this. Uh, Jose was mentioning that you did have NFL uh, spots. Is there some NFL bets? Um, in no, because I'm not in the state of New Jersey. I'm traveling back to New Jersey actually today specifically. So once I get back in New Jersey, so probably round two, I'll probably tweet some stuff out. But if I was home right now, yeah, nah, me and Big Show are definitely talking about the NFL draft and he's definitely got my mind racing on some spots, but I can't bet it in the state of Connecticut. All right, well, let's get you back to Jersey, man, where you can get that cash. Let's get to work here in NBA. Just one game on the board, 8.30 p.m. Eastern East, first round game six. Boston now leading the series 3-2. The Hawks and the Heat uh, going out on the road and winning straight up in tough situations. Uh, that was a big win for the Hawks. Now, we've seen it all year. Your team loses a very important piece, and they step up. And that's what happened here. Uh, Carlos Garcia says he uh, doesn't have a doesn't give a fuck what the spread is. He's got Boston all day. You gotta care what the spread is a little bit. I don't. I don't <laughs> am I right now? Like, how can you say you don't give a fuck what the spread is? I mean, but I can see Boston winning this game, but Atlanta to cover. Let's take a look at the line history here for this one. One game on the docket, Celtics at Hawks. The Hawks open up at plus 5.5, minus 102. They're now plus 7, minus 108. So they're plus 7, but it is slightly juiced. Totals-wise, it's opened up at 232, and it's now at 231. This play, this pace slowed down in game 5 without DeJounte out there. Uh, now they're playing the pace of 102.40 possessions a game, close to what the Hawks played this regular season, 101.56. Celtics playing at 99.15 this year, 20th fastest in the league. Polo this, Polo that says, I'm waiting on any one player to admit voting Trey Young most overrated and apologize. Yeah, facts, though. I, I didn't like that one. I get the Rudy Gobert and the Tristan Thompson ones, but I didn't, I didn't like the Trey Young one. I like it. I uh, I think like a lot it. of people under don't understand how short Trey Young is in person. <laughs> like, <laughs> I like it. Uh, and I love uh, my guy Polo this, Polo that, being with me since I started. Thank you for your support, my man. All right, let's talk about this spot here. We have 70% of the tickets and 91% of the cash on the Boston Celtics. 62,000 bets in, 91% of the cash on the Celtics to bounce back. Total-wise, 28% of the tickets are on the under and 65% of the cash on the under. Robert Franklin, though, going on the over. Wow. So the market has moved slightly to the under. The public is on the over. The pace slowed down considerably in Game 5. You would expect the pace to slow down in these series as the games get more important. Hmm. I am now interested in this under. Hawks I would one. not bet the under. Okay, well, I'd, let's break it all down here because I mean, clearly, that's the you have seventy two percent of the tickets on the over, but uh, well, let's. I'd be very interested to hear the whole breakdown. Uh, let's just uh, set a quick table for you. So Dejounte comes back in, averaging twenty five point three points, five point eight assists in this series, and they didn't have him. Trey Young went off thirty eight points. He's got three straight games with at least thirty two. Jalen Brown playing excellent basketball. Tatum is not. Tatum was healthy <laughs> in the last spot, but man, Jalen Brown looking very good. And Boston swept the regular season series. They won twice in Atlanta, and now they have to win in Atlanta to put this series to bed and to stop giving Embiid rest. Take it away for us, Billy Brisbane Celtics Hawks. Shouts to my guy, Nasty Nate, in the chat. Uh, Mr. Trifecta man himself. I'm not going with the Boston trifecta, but 
I like Boston Celtics first half over 60 and a half minus 140 so far over in eight games versus Atlanta this year, averaging 65.9 points per game in the first half per game and a uh, 126.1 offensive rating in the first half, which is really good. And that kind of correlates with my second bet. Uh, I'm on the Boston Celtics first half minus three and a half minus 118. Uh, this is also kind of like correlated with the uh, first half over. I mean, they've outscored Atlanta by eight plus in four out of their five first halves, scoring 60 plus in five first halves. And uh, Boston's 19 and eight ATS covering at 70 percent overall, 11 and three ATS uh, on the road in the first half since last postseason. So uh, I like Boston first half over and Boston first half minus three and a half. Um, full game wise, I definitely agree with some of the chat it, chat comments of the books are not giving away free money in the NBA. We talked about it on uh, your Sunday night stream about uh, you're asking me what was I on for the Denver Nuggets uh, game, and I told you, nah, man, they're not giving out free money. I'm betting this hockey game, you'll get a couple of squeakers through for the hockey game. And uh, granted, that game started off three to zero, but uh, we ended up cashing the ticket, and the Nuggets game was the sweatiest game I've ever seen in my life. But that's go besides the fact, I feel like the books are going to really, they lined this game at five and a half on the opener. Now it's up to seven. I feel like Atlanta ends up back to recovering this line, but the Celtics cash for the money line, parlay tickets and stuff like that. My only player prop lean would be Robert Williams over seven and a half rebounds, minus 150. Uh, I'm Mr. Juice guy himself, but a little bit too much juice for me to be taken on the Robert Williams rebound prop. Um, the double double prop is at plus 325. Uh, he's been taking more of a challenge on controlling the paint. Uh, Missoula challenged Williams in game three, uh, quote unquote, get a motherfucking rebound. And he seemed to respond in game four uh, with the 13.15 rebound double double performance. And then on uh, Tuesday night, he burned everybody's pockets, missing the rebound prop by the uh, hook. It was, uh, I think, top five most bet on player props that day and he missed it by a hook um he finished the game with 10 points and seven rebounds but he played his most minutes in the series in the last two games last time we we're on the show we we're talking about how cheeky akongu was going to start getting more minutes over clint capella and that's been happening in the last two games just because uh cheeky akongu's activity around the rim uh they're gonna have to subsequent that with uh robert williams out there on the floor so i definitely think robert williams is the way i want to lean for the props but i want to do a little bit more research to see if i'm gambling on the double double or am i really betting a minus 150 rebound prop again the first half team total over 16 and a half. Uh, what was the juice with that? I can't find minus that. 140 at Bet MGM, Pennsylvania 40. Because, yeah, I can get the 61 and a half at minus 106. I don't mind the 61 and a half. I just more, uh, the my numbers in the model say the 60 and a half. It's the number, and I'll, I'll take the juice. And if they're offering it for me at Bet MGM PA, I'm just gonna make the phone call and place to bet. Celtics first half minus three and a half. I can get you that at minus one fifteen though, three cents cheaper. You haven't tweeted anything out yet? No, I haven't tweeted anything out yet. I got the uh what Celtic player would you cheat on your boyfriend for as the uh key cued up video for today's tweet. Wow. Interesting. Uh, okay. uh let's go back. Let me see if I can get you a better yeah, I can't get you. Okay. Uh so we'll use that sixty and that actually let me just see if I can uh I don't think this is going to be an official bet, but I'm definitely throwing a little bit of money on Robert Williams, double-double, but nothing on the show makes an official bet unless it's like a full unit. Yeah, no, that makes sense here. Uh, I wonder if I could can I get you anything better. No, they won't let me. All right. So, wow, 16.5 minus 140 is the spot here. Celtics first half minus 3.5, leaving, leaning leaning towards a Time Lord. Was it the rebounds prop or looking at double-double? Both of them. I feel like they correlate with each other. If he gets the rebound prop, more than likely he'll be on his way towards double-double. But it's just like, do I really want to be betting double-double props and rebound props? The way the NBA has been going the last couple of days, I feel like I just want to dumb it down and just get some winning tickets going through the hoop first. Chase Fox says Hawks have made it clear they're not going to roll over. He says, I think they give it up. They're all again tonight, play 48 solid minutes. I like the over because of that. So it's kind of high first quarter, maybe. Astute Chaos leaning to the first half over 118 and a half. There you go, 118 and a half. 
Wow. All right. So Celtics first half, Lou Chase looking at Polo this, Polo that, getting some love for the Trey Young prop for threes, three threes at plus 105. Did you look at Trey Young prop? Um, I preferably don't really like the player props in this game. That's the reason why I kind of like the Robert Williams player prop. Uh, there's a lot of star stud players. I got burned on the Malcolm Brogdon PRA the last game. I, to be honest with you, is when I look into this game and like the what the stats say and what my eyes have shown me, it seems like the Celtics get up early in this game and then end up getting comfortable and then the Celt- and then the Hawks end up coming out of halftime pretty hot back to recovering and it's like a three point the five point Celtic win. That's how I see this game playing out. But I think the first half, I think they probably put up like. 63 64 points uh so 63 64 with Atlanta around 58 59 so that would be the way I kind of want to attack the game it's just isolating the first half I would even probably play the first half player props over the actual full game player props if you're going to hit a star stud player Jeffrey Stazowski says they moved Capella's rebounds and assists from 11 and a half down to nine and a half that is a big move ron crawford is on the hawks plus six and a half nasty nate looking at the celtics second quarter mike m says faves have been taking a beating in the first quarter of the season he's waiting for the second half to make it a trifecta he says his advice is first half second half full game that's an interesting way of handling it saturated is on uh, the atlanta hawks and bogdanovich's points and uh, not not much love here for my idea on this. I got a quick question. Somebody asked in the chat, how do I feel about the wire-to-wire Boston to win at plus 146? Is that Boston to win in every quarter? Uh, I think it's first half full game. I believe that's a first half full game bet. First half full game is what I uh, what I believe. Um, we'll give uh, Brizzy a second here. Uh <laughs> No idea what he's saying. I hope it's good. <laughs> no, no, no. It was uh, we we're doing some other stuff on the side. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut you. I hope he didn't say that. <laughs> no. uh, okay. Actually, uh, after the Cavs pick yesterday, uh, I'm shocked I haven't gotten booted out. <laughs> Brizzy on the Celtics first half team total over 16 and a half. Celtics first half minus three and a half. Uh, I guess I'm going to half. Uh, oh, uh, Mike M said that was to lead every quarter, so it wasn't the first half full game. Not to win every quarter, but to have the lead. Yeah, the, the, yeah. I thought. Yeah, I, I, I would. I wouldn't mind. I would just bet the trifecta. I feel like uh, if you bet the, it, I honestly don't think I'm kind of with the first quarter. First quarters get a little bit sketchy in the NBA. Just random bullshit happens. A couple turnovers or weird substitution happens. That's why I kind of want to isolate the first half and the uh, spread as well because. I feel like the depth of the Celtics is going to be better than the Hawks with DeJounte Murray coming back. Maybe a couple of the rotations don't click as well. Um, I definitely think the Celtics get up early. I mean, I keep on repeating myself, but I, I, I just don't see why do I want to bet a minus seven with the Celtics, bro? That's wild. See, I think in a game of this magnitude, and like I don't want to – I see I don't there's not one person in the chat that said anything about the under here and, and so I'm gonna take some time with it. But in a game of this magnitude, I, I think the under 59 and a half first quarter is live. And I think the full game under is live. I, I just think that there has to be there has to be defensive intensity. Now in game five, they scored 236 points and the pace was considerably slower than uh, in game four. So that does give me a pause. Uh, TJ says, is anyone on Atlanta? Yes. Ron Crawford on Atlanta. Saturated's on Atlanta. So there are... Uh, I, I kind of had the same opinion, Jim, in that Milwaukee and uh, Miami game. I thought that game was a super under, and I thought the Golden State game was going to be a super under, but I didn't bet it those two games at all, and they went super over. I feel like sometimes when it gets into the playoff intensity, that just makes the star players want to shoot more shots that are that are just going to go in like they're just more locked in instead of Trey young waiting towards the fourth quarter to shoot 30 footers. He might start shooting 30 footers as soon as the game starts. Like, you know, they know what's on the line for this game. Uh, I think this makes the role players shoot more shots. And especially with Atlanta being home, I feel like uh, that helps more of Atlanta's role players to step up more. 
And uh, that would be the way the over would hit, would be the Bogdan Badanovich's of the world scoring 17 off the bench, the Sadiq Bays getting 12, Jalen Johnson doing his thing. That's the way the over hits. But, I mean, I, if they put Kent Capella in there for 25-plus minutes, Thunder's a lock. <laughs> like, yeah, he's, he's a key piece for the under. Now, the first two games of the series went under. The last three have gone over, so – I mean, I think that they need to just boo his bitch ass out of the lineup and just put in Chiki Okongwu. Even though Chiki Okongwu isn't going to be the best defensive guy, he's going to give you some offensive production and he's going to rebound for you. What more do you want to ask for? It's not like Clint Capella is this 20 and 20 guy out here. Clint Capella, uh, don't get me on a Clint Capella rant, but he's a fucking bum, man. Just play Chiki Okongwu and you probably have a better shot at winning the series. And it feels like that's what Quinn Snyder has been doing and they've been winning games. If you saw the last game, uh, Chiki Akangu played the whole entire overtime and the closing minutes of the game, and they ended up winning the basketball game. Not surprising. I mean, we talked about it a week early that he was leading the series in offensive rebounds, but wasn't getting any minutes. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna need more time. I uh, I just find it suspicious. It's suspicious, but you add the Jante Murray back into the team. I definitely think Atlanta is going to score more points, and they scored a lot of points in the last game. So it's like, are they going to come down? Does Dejounte Murray shoot more shots and fuck up the chemistry? Like, there's a lot of things that play into the full over under. That's why I feel like I want to isolate the Celtics scoring because I know the Celtics are going to put the ball in the back of the net. They're pissed off. Yeah, and Luches has a great point. He says every year in the NBA playoffs, the games all go under for the first series, but then at some point shit gets real and the pace quit quickens from that point on over's rule. I think we've arrived there. Look, I don't need to force anything here. We have Brizzy on the Celtics first half team told over 16 and a half and the Celtics first half minus three and a half minus one fifteen. I will uh continue studying it, but uh it looks like let's see if we can we're very close to getting to the window uh to start off our MLB card and I've got uh, big investments in the NHL card. So I don't know if I'm not certainly not going to force it. Uh, Brizzy, my man, tell us a little bit about the podcast this week. Oh, yeah. Podcast this week. uh, Me, Mills and Big Show uh, just talking around the different uh, MMA events that we have going around uh, this weekend and uh, previewing a couple of coming weekends, cards and stuff like that. So make sure you're tuned here for Pulse Virtue Radio. Hit the like and subscribe button. And uh, make sure you follow me over on Instagram at BillyBrizDFS, Twitter at Getting Bills, because uh, we got some MMA content going around this week. Pulse Virtue Radio, we're on the road, talking hands, baby. Uh, we got a couple more videos before the actual UFC live podcast. So make sure you stay tuned in. People always ask me, they want more MMA content out of me. Well, here you go. We got it this week. I love it, Brizzy. Uh, thank you for taking the time to rock with us. Uh, one game on the slate, but two looks for Brizzy here. First half team total over 16 and a half. Celtics first half minus three and a half. Uh, Brizzy, my man, I will be in touch. Hopefully you can join us on Sunday evening. Yeah, I'll be back in I'll be back in Jersey uh, as soon as I get done this podcast. I think I leave in like two hours and then I'll be back in Jersey. So it's back to normalness. You'll see the flag and the poster and uh, we'll be back Sunday. I love it, man. Respect. There he is, Billy Brisbane. 